My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey, hey, welcome back. Have you uh, ever thought about getting into investing in mobile home parks? Chances are, if you've been listening to this podcast, you've heard me interview a few different operators. You've heard the the pros and the cons of this investment strategy. Definitely a lot of pros to it. And speaking of pros, we've got one on the call here today. Jan Wanot is zooming in from beautiful Seattle, Washington. And he has, I believe, eight mobile home communities in his portfolio. And pretty much, you name it, he knows it about mobile homes and mobile home investing. So, Jan, welcome to the call. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. Appreciate it. All right, Jan, give us a quick 30,000-foot snapshot. What does your real estate investing portfolio look like today, mid-2024? Sure. Yeah, it's a great start. I would say right now it's cut half and half between residential and commercial. And on the residential side, it's... Primarily single and small multifamily rentals that I own, yeah. um, as well as some flips and developments I do. And on the commercial side, it's very homogenous. It's all the same thing. And that is off-market, acquired, seller-financed mobile home parks. So That sounds uh, we, pretty sweet. We do have a mix. Off-market, seller-financed mobile home parks. I'll, we'll have to dig into that because you're speaking my language there, my friend. Very cool. So you got a combination of both. And um, yeah, so how did you how did you kind of make the switch from residential into commercial? And, and how did you start focusing on mobile home parks? Sure. You know, typically change happens when there's enough pain for the change to happen. And I was managing my small portfolio of about 20 rental units. And I was doing all the work myself and in terms of management. And I had three washers break in like a week in different units. And I was just running around trying to get these new washers in and people pissed at me and I was just so sick of it. And so I just figured, look, I love the cash flow. I love the appreciation. How can I continue to make that without such an operational nightmare and headache and things breaking? How can I own less cash flow more? That's the question I asked. And that question led me to uncorrelated assets, which are self-storage, mobile home parks and RV parks. And after kind of traversing the differences between those, um, I landed on what is kind of in the middle, which is mobile home parks. So, you know, with self storage, like, yeah, it's really operationally easy because it's concrete boxes. Anyone can operate that, but the returns are much lower, right? Mm. RV parks are, are on the complete opposite end of the spectrum operationally, it's a nightmare. I mean, it's, it's, it's really hospitality. It's no longer a real estate investment. Yeah. They're coming and going every couple of days. It's almost like a hotel, right? Constantly. However, you know, the returns are also the greatest. Imagine that the more work you do, the more money you make. Um, and so mobile home parks are kind of in the middle. Mobile home parks are, you know, we, we do have, we prefer long-term stays. So we don't accept anyone under six months, even if it's in an RV. Um, and so, we don't have people coming and going like an RV park. Yeah. However, it is definitely more work than a self storage facility because we still have to own the land and we have to maintain the community and we still have to deal with humans, of course. And there's it's still housing versus storage um, is not housing humans, right? It's just housing stuff. People yeah. don't care about stuff as much as they care about humans. Uh, however, we generally the the rate of return is greater with mobile home parks. So I figured I've always loved affordable housing. I'm tired of owning so many things. How can I own just land and utilities and manage a community and not own flooring and lighting and walls, right? And so that's why I got into mobile home parks. We love it because we just own land and utilities and we don't own the homes. So, I, you know, I haven't had to fix the toilet in any of my mobile homes uh, because I don't own the mobile homes. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is kind of a sweet model, right? Because you own the dirt and they own the, the, the piece of tin housing on top of that, that dirt and they pay you a monthly pad fee and 
they take care of that leaky toilet. They take care of that leaky roof. They take care of the flooring, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So now you've kind of specialized in finding off-market deals and getting owner financing and doing creative deals with mobile home parks. Uh, are these... I, I'm thinking they would be pretty few and far between, but I've been wrong quite often in my life. So tell me, tell me how that whole thing works. Sure. Well, I've got a uh, seven step alliteration for acquiring off market seller finance, mobile home parks. Shall I share that? Or should I do in a super abbreviated version? No, go ahead. Uh, alliteration's good. Okay. <laughs> all right. They all start with these. So the first step, to getting your first seller financed mobile home park off market is uh, define. So define what you want specifically. I recommend if you're gonna buy a mobile home park, um, certainly if it's out of state, you need at least 40 units because then you can afford to hire a property manager. If it's in state and you're gonna be willing to manage it, mm -hmm. then I recommend at least 15 units. I wouldn't touch anything less than that because at that point, honestly, you might as well just buy a duplex or triplex in terms of revenue, right? Relative to headache. So first you need to define that, you know, you, this is my buying criteria. Well, it sounds like you've defined it for us. That makes it easy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Next, you need to disseminate your message to owners, right? So um, what we prefer and what we've gotten most of our deals through is either cold calling or sending postcards. Okay, cold calling, we hire people from Egypt to cold call for us. We give them a list and we pay them, oh, about 500 bucks a month. And they call every day. And if they get someone on the hook, then we follow up with them. And that brings us into the next point, which is dive in, dive into the deal and see if it makes sense, right? The owner is gonna have some expectation of pricing. If you're within, let's say, 50% of that, then it's worth. <laughs> That's a pretty big range. All right. Oh, it's, it's huge, but you'd just be amazed at, you know, what showing up and actually talking to someone can do. The price, if they give, if they tell someone on the, you know, for, that calls from Egypt, hey, I want 1.5 million. When I show up and they can see I'm a human that's actually going to operate the community and improve it. And I've done this many times before. They go, oh, you know what? Yeah, we can do a million after all. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's when you actually get into um, that's when you dive into not just the deal, but now diving into the relationship. Right. So then you get to know the person, build some trust, build rapport and get it under contract. So that would be getting the deal. Then next is diligence. Um, the biggest thing to be aware of for mobile home parks in terms of diligence is I would say the system. So if it has septics and wells, um, that is a lot more complicated and costly to maintain than the typical systems in a single family home, right? So yeah. um, there are 50, 100, $200,000 systems that are gonna be providing, you know, safe drinking water or uh, sewage disposal to your tenants. And if those things go wrong, it's not just like, you know, your little duplex. It's like you might, you could poison 50 humans, right? If you have a well that um, starts having arsenic in it, for example, right? And so just a little bit more to figure out there. Now, it doesn't mean you have to become an expert in these systems, but it means you have, just like anything in real estate investment, you have to know how to manage people that are experts, right? Yeah. So, and have a bit of a contingency fund put aside in case something goes wrong, right? I, I would imagine. Of course. We always yeah. plan to, you know, when we put together the capital required for these projects, we always raise additional capital to make improvements. And we'll buy a park with failing septic systems. We've done it. But we need a discount to account for that. If if you the seller tells us one thing and we find something else, then we'll still close. We're we're not shy of doing the work. However, we do need to, you know, have some kind of a discount to account for that and put that money back into the park. So yeah. um, that is the diligence piece. And after diligence, you need to get debt. So hopefully you've built a good relationship with the owner. 
Um, it's not purely about the transaction. Hopefully you can add value to their life in other ways. And if you can, then perhaps now is a great time um, to talk about seller financing. So generally we can, I mean, on the last deal we did, I bought a park a couple months ago and the guy wanted 600,000 cash. And how, how many ads on the park? How many? You 21. Have? 21. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So was it pretty, in Washington or out of state? In Washington. So about yeah. 30,000 a pad, which was a great deal. Very cheap. Um, it's a lower end park, but that's okay because it's next to two parks I already own. And so now we have a small portfolio there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're just kind of aggregating them. And so, and then what ended up happening is I said, look, Sam, we're, we're not going to pay you 600 cash, but because it's not going to cash flow very well, but I could pay you 750,000 with these terms. Right. And so people are like, Jan, how did you get a 3.6% interest rate uh, on your commercial loan? All I can get is 8%. Well, you know, I gave him more money in terms of pricing. I was going to say, maybe you got 0% on that one, but no, okay. Because <laughs> yeah, you're paying him. Got it. Right. And so we can get, and with a bank, I can only have five years. With an owner, I can get 10, 15, 20 years, especially if, if I'm making a payment and they're, and they're done searching for new properties. Some people are just done. They don't want to find a new project. They just like receiving a monthly paycheck. And so uh, it, you can get much favor, much more favorable terms if you're willing to be flexible on price. And the price to me doesn't matter that much if I'm getting a 10, 20 year term. I know I'm going to be adding value to this property. And in 20 years, the price that I paid 20 years ago is going to be irrelevant. I know it's yeah. going to be double, triple, quadruple what I'm buying it for, right? Um, even with very, very modest appreciation or no appreciation, we add enough value that um, the price becomes secondary to cash flow, cash on cash return, risk adjusted return, return on equity. Those, are, There's a lot more to look at than just price in terms of getting a deal done. So that is debt and next and final is dollars or equity. So first you need the deal, then you get the debt. Then you get the equity. Um, where do you get the dollars? Well, if you've done everything right to this point, getting the capital required to close one of these deals is very easy because people want a strong passive return on their capital. And if you can present that and prove that you have that, then it will be easy to get the capital. Um, and so that is the last well, part. My, my recommendation around that is always wherever possible, try to get a few investors lined up ahead of time. So you're not scrambling last minute and, and stressed out in case the capital doesn't come super fast. So chicken and the egg kind of thing. I, my recommendation is to try to have some capital lined up ahead of time, but yeah, for sure. It, it, the more the merrier. If you can have a million lined up beforehand, then that's preferred always. But uh, if not, then, you know, if you, if you have an amazing deal, you can find the money. Yeah. I'll say that. So yeah, maybe walk us through one of your more recent deals and kind of explain how those, however many D's, kind of seven D's, I think it was, yeah. how that kind of played out with a particular deal, like uh, a recent one, if you would. So sure. how did you find it and all that kind of good stuff? Yeah. Well, that is the most recent one, the one I've been describing. So I could just, um, sure. yeah, I mean, I can add a little more color to that. That 21 unit we closed uh, just two months ago to, on the dot. Yeah. Um, yep, cold calling um, was how we disseminated the info. Yeah, so one of your one of your guys from Egypt called up this park owner. Yeah. That's it, said, hey, do you wanna sell? Let me take down a few pieces of info. Okay, mm -hmm. then my partner uh, talked to him, talked to the owner, dialed in pricing, and we kind of built the relationship the gentleman wanted to get into business brokerage and get out of the mobile home park. And so then we, we just try to figure out what are the pain points. Okay. The pain points are, is his, he is a tax guy. His, um, assistant at the office is actually now managing the park. She doesn't want to do that. So we built a relationship with her too. She got to know us. She has a little, little bit of extra ammo there. Yeah. Yeah. She she got to know us and she looked us up. She liked what she saw online. So that's important too, is make sure you have something that pops up that's positive with people Google your name. Mm -hmm. And so we built some trust and and that's why he was willing to, you know, offer us great terms. Um we put we put down, oh gosh, a hundred and sixty thousand on the deal. And he so finally got some cash in pocket. 
That's yep. He got yeah. cash. Yep. We, he also worked with us on a 1031, which is great. So we had tax tax free proceeds from another park we just sold go into this one. So we, we got into it without paying taxes on the last one. We love that. Yeah. Our capital partners love that too. Um, and gosh, yeah. So in terms of equity, I found, I raised the capital simply by sharing the deal with quite a few people. Mm -hmm. Um, the debt was seller financed and now we're operating it. It's been two months. We've raised the rent from about 7,500 a month to almost 11,000. Wow, um, that's huge. Yeah. So if you think about, you know, uh, people, what do you, what do people try to get in terms of, you know, rent to price? Like usually what can you get for $750,000 in my area? Well, you could buy a pretty crappy fourplex in Tacoma mm -hmm. and that would probably bring in you know, about 1500 units, so $6,000. Well, this thing for 750 is bringing in double that. I mean, it's gonna be 13 grand by the end of this year as we bring on three more units that are kind of empty right now. So uh, for, in terms of a rent to value ratio, mobile home parks far outpace, you know, small multifamily, single family homes um, and, and are still affordable if you can find a good deal in, in terms of getting into that deal. So. Now, see, if you if we went below 21 units, you can see how it's at some point would not really be worth the headache to manage. Let's say it was half of that. Let's say it was 10 units. Um, at that point, you're managing 10 people to make, gosh, you know, five or six thousand dollars. At that point, just get a fourplex, you know, a duplex. But if you can find at least, a, you know, 15, 20, 25 unit that it, you start to get those economies of scale where it does make sense and it really gets attractive once you get to a hundred plus. Um, but of course that's when you yeah, also have a lot of expensive. competition. Yeah. yeah. Very, very interesting. That's cool, Leon. Um, yeah. Congratulations on dialing that in. I'm curious to keep your, your phone guys busy. They must be calling like you must be generating quite a few leads for them every month. So are you kind of going nationwide or are you focused just on a few states or how are you, how are you keeping those guys busy? Sure. Yeah. You know, Dave, there are only about 50,000 mobile home parks in the whole country. So data and leads are a tough part of this business. If you want to start dialing on single family, there's 50,000 houses like within five miles of you, right? Exactly. Or less, right? Yeah. Maybe a few miles. But with mobile home parks being so few, we really are just constantly trying to improve getting, making sure we get the right owner information, um, updating it and accept, and like for the really high value potential leads, calling them ourselves in terms of like the principles of the company, not, you know, a caller in Egypt. So yeah, we are constantly trying to keep that data fresh and keep them being able to continue having leads come in. And we do right now, we do have about, I would say eight to 10 leads a week coming in um, from our, we now have two callers calling on mobile home parks. Yeah, yeah. And we're converting typically about one of those per month into a contract. So um, that's pretty awesome. That's, yeah, that's what the pipeline looks like. Yeah, well, that is now a lot of them we will wholesale to other investors and then we'll cherry pick and and close the best ones ourselves. And then we'll just use those assignment fees um, to keep to keep the business alive and- and uh, Keep paying the guys in, in Egypt for doing the that's call. That's true. Yeah. Someone's gotta pay them. Very, very cool. All right, Jan, well, hey, we time flies when we're having fun here. I appreciate you sharing your acronym there. Well, I guess your, your seven Ds, I think it was. Uh, yeah, the alliteration. alliteration. Yeah. The alliteration. Uh, if people are wanting to connect with you, finding out, find out more about how they can get involved in these kind of deals or how they can actually find their own mobile home parks and kind of follow your, your footsteps, where can they go? What should they do? If you want to get in touch with me, the best way is on Facebook and you can find my group. It's called W A R E I Washington real estate investing and search Wari on Facebook groups. And if you want to learn more about mobile home parks, get coaching from us directly, then go to mhparkacademy.com. Very good. Well, Jan, sounds like you're doing great things. Keep up the good work. 
Thanks so much for having me, Dave. Appreciate it. All right, everybody, take care, and we will see you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit MoneyPartnerFormula.com to find out more. All right, take care, and we'll see you on the next interview.